My name is Graham Elwood, and you are watching The Political Vigilante. I'm here with a returning guest, friend of the show, uh, Whitney Webb. Whitney, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me on. Well, first, I just want to say welcome to Rockfin. We're also streaming on Yeah. Rockfin. It's fantastic. <laughs> so um, I think you're going to love it because all the censorship that we get on Yeah. <laughs> is nuts, which you're experiencing right now. Like, yeah, my website was taken down last night. I made the mistake, I guess, of teasing what my new article was going to be about. Right. And so I kind of, uh, I guess, informed them in advance. And so there's been like a denial of service attack for like 24 hours on my site. And also the article that I put up on my site was scrubbed from the WordPress database. So on my website, you can't even access it anymore. Yeah, they, they really uh, didn't like it, I guess. I don't know. So um, you can still access it through a couple different ways. But Rockfin actually save, saved me today because I could put the article up there for free, right? Uh, so people can go read it their way. Uh, but we're going to figure out the deal with the site. I mean, we changed hosting like a week ago because we were having some problems with uh, my article last week about all the election stuff, right? Um, so yeah, I guess I've hit some nerves. That's all right though. I mean, we'll, we'll make it work, but yeah, I'm definitely happy to be on Rockfin cause it's been a really great, um, you know, backup in that sense. And, and, you know, I like it so far, so far, so good. I think just about all of us on Rockfin, it's been, it's, we all came over there and really started leaning into it because we all got screwed over somehow. Like it was about three yeah. ago, <laughs> YouTube did shut my live stream down in the middle of it. Yeah. Yeah. They and do I, that. Like all these things that get demonetized and everything. And so, um, you know, and, and, you know, just a piece of advice, maybe you shouldn't have used a deep state web server.gov. I don't know if that was the <laughs> No, but I, I never hosted my uh, website in the U S to avoid this. I had it in Iceland and now it's in the Netherlands. <laughs> right. But they still have like, Smart. Well, they made it like not accessible from within the US, apparently, for whatever reason, because there were um, some people that were using VPNs and they like made their location look like it was Iceland and then they could join or, or they could they could get to the article. Weird. So, so why don't we let's get into this article. Why don't you tell us about what this article was? And now people can obviously get it on Rockfin, but tell us what the article right. is. What you've been you, you've done a couple articles recently. Uh, that's why I wanted to have you on to talk about. So tell us what this article is. Okay, so the most recent article is about um, an NGL called Thorn that you might have heard of because of its celebrity founder, Ashton Kutcher. Um, and basically what they say they do is, you know, they're all about stop helping police stop child trafficking. But really what, you know, so Thorn is, is partnered with all these Silicon Valley companies, right, including Amazon. And so Amazon came out a few months ago in June and said they're not going to sell facial recognition software to police anymore, but they're still supplying that software to police through thorn right which is uh you know they're partnered with them they built thorns uh spotlight software which uses recognition and a company backed by the cia's nqtel that's who made thorns stop child trafficking uh program that they're giving to police for free right so police everywhere are using this stuff but there's no oversight over whether police use it just to save kids or if they use it for anything else they're doing, right? So Amazon recognition has gotten in a lot of trouble in past years, for example, because they, uh, you know, that software falsely identified 28 members of Congress with mugshots of criminals, uh, mainly politicians of that were, you know, uh, of color, right? I remember Big surprise that. there, right? So, you know, uh, this is the same software that's being used allegedly to help law enforcement uh, track down and, and save kids, they say. But there's a lot of really creepy um, ties. If you look at the board of Thorn, uh, you have people from Covington and Burling law firm. Their main Silicon Valley lawyer is on there. Covington and, uh, Covington and Burling is a DC law firm that was involved in the overthrow of Honduras's government when Hillary Clinton <laughs> was uh, head of the State Department in 2009. It's also where Eric Holder works and uh, John Bolton used to be a lawyer there. So that's the type of uh, law firm that's so, you know, wants to save kids in the US, right? Um, but that's just one person. You also have a guy that's um, part of the World Health Organization now, uh, co-founded a charity with Colin Powell, which I'm sure is, is great. 
<laughs> you know, um, and, and, you know, it's just a bunch of people that you wouldn't expect there, right? And of course, they're partnered with Google, Amazon, all these big tech companies, and several InQtel funded companies. One of the people on their board is a guy named Joe Lonsdale, who's one of the co-founders alongside Peter Thiel of Palantir, which is a CIA funded company. The CIA was its only client from 2005 to 2008. Um, and it's used by 17, all 17 US intelligence agencies. Lonsdale um, was also recently accused of his ex-girlfriend of depriving her of food and raping her repeatedly. Um, so he's, uh, you know, on the board of this feel good NGO. You know, if you go to Thorne's website, it's full of all these like nice pictures of kids playing and happy and talks about how they save all these kids. But basically, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a, um, I would say it's sort of like a front away for Silicon Valley companies to give in, in these experimental softwares that they can't legally like sell or publicly sell to police departments under the guise of, oh, they're gonna, they're gonna save kids, but no one knows how they're really using this stuff. And it's very likely that Amazon and a lot of these other companies that are making this because they give it away for free, have some sort of backdoor into the data, right? That, uh, or the way law enforcement is using it because you know that's the trade off for them is that they can you know, take data out of this program and use it to train their AI algorithms, right? Because facial recognition is one of those like AI based uh, technologies, right? It uses artificial intelligence and the way to have a better facial recognition technology is to have a better AI algorithm. And in order to have a better AI algorithm, you have to have masses and masses and masses of data to train that algorithm on, right? So there's definitely something up here. Uh, that's just an overview of some of the connections, but there's a, there's a lot more to, to dig into there. Uh, I wrote it all in one day. <laughs> so my brain is just kind of like uh, mush today, but I'm, I'm you know, uh, that's that's a, a, like an overview, I guess you could say, but there's a lot of Clinton tie-ins um, that we can get oh, into here in a little um, bit. There yeah. we go. Like, I'm <clears throat> you, I mean, obviously you figured this out on all your research with the Epstein stuff and so have I. Yeah. Like, boy, any of these NGOs are very suspect. I mean, is every charitable organization nefarious? No, but these ones and then when you start seeing these same names pop up and if the clintons are anywhere near it boy i do not trust it at all i just don't and it's it's they've done this repeatedly and they've used the clinton foundation i mean in haiti and all these other places right and it's like you know jeline maxwell's uh whatever save the ocean foundation had a oh we're gonna teach 13 to 14 year olds how to do that it's always always some little little thing in there that's very creepy and very suspect so so which uh, it's it's it obviously and and then the fact that they just pull your website down that's the other thing if these ngos had nothing to hide right it would be like well no what like if you did if you thought you had some info on on some organization and and you were wrong why would they pull it down right well like if you're actually like a celebrity like Ashton Kutcher, okay, and you want to create an organization to like save kids, why are you going to team up with two companies to create your tool to save kids that are major CIA contractors or funded by the CIA when the CIA has a documented history of involvement in sex trafficking for blackmail, uh, among other things, right? And also the finders cult, for example, which has been tied to the CIA, which was like, you know, a, a, a egregious physical abuse of children, right? So the CIA has been tied to all that stuff. Right. So you're going to be like, yeah, I want to protect kids. So let's let's, you know, the CIA can do it. It doesn't yeah. really click, you know? It, well, it doesn't click at all. I mean, I did a video last year on the finders cult and it's horrific. I mean, there's evidence that they right. were be impregnating women and selling their children. And the CIA was backing this like it's it's and the officer that was investigating it got pulled off the case and he they smeared him in a report, all these standard things. So at the very least, Ashton Kutchner is either just really just a dumb, naive celebrity. He's who, not though, right. he's not. So he came out right with the George Floyd protests and like gave this tearful video. He's an actor, remember? This tearful video about how important Black Lives Matters is. Why well, he has Thorn, right? He also is a lead investor in this company called Mark 43, which get alongside Jeff Bezos and uh, General Pet uh, David Petraeus, a former CIA director, which is all, all, all about giving all this high tech uh, equipment to uh, law enforcement, um, their records management stuff, uh, their dispatch stuff, making it all like AI, big data driven stuff for police, right? So 
I mean, I don't really see him being, you know, oh, we're going to reform the police, right? Especially when he's like, he uh, in that company, he co-invests with Bezos, right? He's partnered with Bezos at Thorne through, uh, at Thorne through their Amazon recognition thing. They co-invest in Airbnb together. I mean, if you Google like Bezos and, and, uh, and Ashton Kutcher, you'll see like them being like the two public lead investors in several companies, right? So it's definitely not something like he's, you know, actually cares. <laughs> it's just sort of like the celebrity posturing, you know? Yeah, it is. It is more celebrity posturing while behind the scenes, they're just acquiring more wealth. And, and he wants access to people like Bezos and the CIA because he obviously wants his whatever $50 million isn't enough. So he well, needs- Well, there's a tweet of Ashton Kutcher like posing with a CIA mug and he's like, I love the CIA. And then it says like gra hashtag gratitude or something on it. So I guess he's really not hiding it yet. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Gratitude wow. for the CIA. I mean, you have to be either really ignorant or complicit to uh, send them gratitude. So, all right. So that's the one article about the NGOs and Ashton Kutchner, who's obviously pals with the CIA <laughs> so that they gave him a mug, like some sort of morning <laughs> talk show or something. Um, yeah. Well, really quick, um, before we get there, I wanted to talk about the main Clinton guy because I didn't do that either. Um, so just a couple things really quick. So uh, sorry about that. <laughs> um, so it's also Ashton Kutcher's thorn is also partnered with the McCain Institute. Ashton Kutcher is part of the McCain Institute. Right. Remember, Cindy McCain is on that video saying we all knew what Epstein was doing. Well, they have a uh, com combating human trafficking program and the head of that is a guy named Ernie Allen, who was also this Thorn NGO's child protection advisor. This guy, in my opinion, is super shady and someone, uh, you know, with the time and, and, you know, maybe in the U.S. or whatever needs to dig into this guy. Um, basically, he runs or ran for a long time the National Center for Exploited and Missing Children, a bunch of ties to the Clintons with that organization. The guy that worked immediately under him was a uh, the guy that co-founded Hillary for America and like all this stuff super involved in Hillary's campaign. The Center for National, like National Center for Exploited and Missing Children partnered with the Clintons. This should be concerning, right? But what's really creepy is that for anyone that's ever heard of the serial killer and rapist in Belgium, uh, Mark Dutrell or the Dutrell affair, um, that was basically like Epstein before Epstein. It was in 1996. It was this, this discovery of this huge elite pedophile ring in Belgium that was covered up like really extensively. A lot of witnesses dropped dead. Uh, this guy had all these girls chained up in his basement. There were hundreds of hairs from different people and the police never analyzed them. Uh, and there was a lot of cover up, like just an insane cover up going on from the highest levels of government. The prime minister of Belgium at the time, who was the architect of that cover up, calls up this Ernie Allen guy and asks him for advice about what to do, basically, officially. And then the response to that is creating the International Center for Exploited and Missing Children that's launched a few years later by none other than Hillary Clinton herself. That seems normal that you well, would have. Who was on Epstein's plane twice and her husband 26 times and the two of them went to uh, his Right before then. Yeah, this is 1999, right? Ugh. So uh, there's definitely some creepy stuff going on there. So that's the child protection advisor for Thorne. Who, and, and they've been like, um, they have a lot of ties into this thing. Uh, well, what I talked about last time I was on the show, this um, digital identity stuff for children, iris scanning. And stuff like that. They're uh, they they call it uh, child recognition technologies. So it's not just facial recognition technologies that we're seeing rolled out on this huge scale. There's a particular interest among people for child recognition technologies. Now, you know, I'm not going to say that the technology in and of, in and of itself is bad, but if you're having people like this CIA people, right, or like this Ernie Allen Clinton guy that was tied up in the cover up of the Dutro affair and all this stuff, like. Uh, definitely the wrong people to be in charge of overseeing how that technology is used because this guy at the national center at this national center is responsible for determining what kids are sent out on Amber alerts, what kids um, are like sent in the missing children bulletin bulletins that go to like police departments and all this stuff. If there's a kid missing that they don't want found and then, you know, it's just, it's creepy. Right. So why is this guy not been <laughs> scrutinized? I don't, I don't know, but you know, he's tied up with the McCain Institute and all this stuff. And also 
that center was involved in um, something I talked about in the article that's really extensive, so I'm not gonna really um, go to in depth here though, but they were partnering behind the scenes with a website that later was revealed to be basically like an online brothel and that 70% of all online um, child sex trafficking ads were coming from that site and they were partnered with them helping them stop it, but they actually didn't stop it. And then the, the people that ran that website back page started cooperating so well with authorities um, that apparently it was too well, right? And they got um, shut down essentially um, with a lot of involvement from this Ernie Allen guy who like turned on them. And uh, I don't know, it's really nuts. I would recommend reading the article because that whole like saga is super, um, I don't even have words for it really. It's nuts though, but basically, you know, they were involved behind the scenes fighting child trafficking with the site that was like responsible uh, for a bunch of child trafficking ads. And then they started, and then that site started cooperating with law enforcement and then this Ernie Allen guy turns on them. Okay. Well, what what all of the, the these specific things that you've uncovered, they're just, they answer the, the bigger question that from all of this is how has this been allowed to happen? How have, you know, millions of children getting trafficked every year. I mean, it's this multi-billion dollar global industry. How is this allowed to happen? If it's just a handful of creeps, you know, in van snatching kids up. And the answer is it's, it's, it's allowed to happen because it's the most powerful people are doing it. And every yeah. time, I mean, look, when I had a year ago, uh, my friend Eric Oldenburg on the show, who was a former child crimes investigator. And he, he told me about these websites that they would be selling kids and there'd be, you know, the, the website would look like it was innocent. Like, Oh, it's just an auction site for whatever. I don't know, baseball cards or something, but actually right. would be a kid, which is why when the stuff that happened with Wayfair a couple months ago mm -hmm. did not mm -hmm. shock me because that's something that my friend told me about. And I remember talking to him, um, when he was still on the force in 2011, when Sandusky that got right. reviewed and this was like a week only a week old that that um discovery about sandusky and i was like and he goes oh more than likely he goes graham this is just the beginning more than likely they're going to find out that this guy was getting kids for alumni and i was like what he goes graham oh you don't want to know it's just awful and because he's done online and and all this awful stuff so it, when, when i i just always remember that what i what a guy who investigated this for a living said to me and so all of this actually everything that you're saying makes sense to me because the most powerful people why can't we find all these kids why is this so hard to find well you get control of the the missing and exploited children the amber alert thing like you say like right. uh -huh. and it's a thing we've talked about on this show like and a definitely you know children and went like murdered and missing indigenous women i've talked about that like right these young women and in some cases girl teenage you know girls go missing and nobody investigates it but mm -hmm. like a white girl in the suburbs goes missing and they're like oh that gets the amber alert and there's a reason for, like they exploit and they snatch up the kids that they know the parents don't have the resources or the money or nobody will listen to them right and no one cares. And that's what, what's so insidious about these organizations and mainly- Well, that's what Epstein tried to do too, right? And Ghislaine, you know, they'd go after uh, kids with uh, domestic situations, right? Yeah, who are impoverished or the parents mm -hmm. need money. And mean, that was one of the things Virginia Roberts said, Epstein joked about of like, oh, I got these parents to just send me their kids for some money. Everybody's got a price. Like he just had this disdain for humanity. Yeah. And you're seeing how this is happening. That's why whenever there's some <clears throat> crisis in a third world country, like all these NGOs starts showing up and the Clinton Foundation in Haiti or whatever, and then where are the kids going? Right. No one, and no one, the, the, the poor people in those areas have no voice. Right. And it's important to keep in mind a lot of the NGOs that people think of that are like, let, like help kids, like save the children, right? One of their biggest fundraisers in the 80s was hosted by Ghislaine Maxwell herself, right? And there was a, a report that came out from UK, the UK's own government, right? That saved the children. Uh, a bunch of their workers were involved in sex for food scandals, withholding food from refugee families if they didn't pony up one of their like preteen daughters for sex, right? Yeah. Save the children. 
save the children from the predators that are pretending to help them, basically. I mean, that's essentially where we are. I mean, all of these organizations need to be investigated and, in, in, you know, overhaul because they're, you know, this is where the predators really seem to hide. You know, they just convince people, they pay some PR people, they design a nice website and they say, oh yeah, we're all about protecting kids, which gets them access to kids. And then, you know, there's no oversight of these people, but there's predators there. Of right. course, I mean, look at Sandusky. Sandusky had this, you know, at risk kids, you know, football foundation or whatever. And that's yeah. what it did yeah. it on kids that way. And again, going back to what my friend, uh, the child crimes investigator said, he goes, Graham, you show me a hundred kids that are abused. 95, 96 of them will come from disadvantaged homes because the predators know this. The predators know like a kid that has, you know, two parents and everyone's paying attention comes home and says, Oh, my coach bought me a bike. The parents are going to be like, what? But the kid whose parents aren't around or not paying attention or they're, it's already an abusive situation or whatever. The predators know this. They know the prey on these kids that don't have parents. I mean, it's like, it's, and, and that's why I remember traveling to Brazil and there were, and I, I, I was so like naive and there was like signs in the airport showing like kids saying, you know, I'm not a tourist attraction. Don't exploit me. And I was like, huh? And it was explained to me, oh, uh, <laughs> you know, rich people from the West, from the U.S., yeah. Western countries come and whether there's, there's poor kids on the street begging. And I remember we were, we were, there was like kids begging and I was like, oh, I got to give these kids money. I got to, like, this is, I can't see kids in the street. And, um, my friend, my, you know, uh, my fiance at the time, Brazilian, she said, don't do that. I said, why? She goes, you're an American. They see you giving these kids money. They're going to assume you're like a pedophile. And I was like, what? And I, I was so naive to the whole situation, but mm. that happens all the time. So, right. Well, sex tourism is a huge uh, issue, right? And a lot of the child pornography that ends up on the internet comes from places like the Philippines and a lot of places in Southeast Asia where like these creepy old men, travel right but they also you know now because of the internet they pay these impoverished families to basically abuse their own children in front of the camera and stuff like this i mean it's totally sick and it's insane it's worth pointing out amazon's cloud is apparently talking about amazon and going back to thorn apparently full of uh child porn uh there's a a, a parent advocacy organization that came out just a, a few weeks ago it's a link to in my article um, talking about how, you know, they're not, they're taking no action to remove it. Right. And also Microsoft, another partner of Thorn, uh, of course, right. Um, uh, on Bing, on, on the search engine, apparently you can search for the most obvious keywords ever if you wanted to find those types of images and they will come up for you. Uh, and it's the only search engine that's still like that. <laughs> right. Um, so why aren't they taking these things down and why aren't groups like Thorn or the National Center for Exploited and Missing Children on Amazon and Microsoft's ass about this, right? Apparently they don't care, but apparently they only cared about this back page site, right? Once it started to be used, it used as a tool by law enforcement to track down predators, right? And it was too effective. And then they take it down. The government, by the way, seized all of its assets, all of the information on that site. They prosecuted as a civil forfeiture case. And by the way, the person that started this case against Backpage, once that change started happening and it became an effective tool, signed off by Kamala Harris. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's not shocking because when she was district attorney in San Francisco, she basically protected pedophile priests. She wouldn't release the names of, there was a whole pedophile priest scandal that came up in San Francisco uh, in the, in the mid 2000s and around whenever she was DA 2008 9 somewhere in there she um all these priests got arrested and she wouldn't release the names of the priests and the survivors yeah, that's why the CIA wants her in freaking office right now and they're going to take out Biden he's going to test positive for covid i don't know if you've covered this yet but they've already set this up what happens if joe biden gets coronavirus they've already told you if he tests positive even if he doesn't show symptoms or whatever it's Kamala. They're going to switch him out. Right. Mm -hmm. And Kamala was chosen, remember, by the Clinton donors before at the Hamptons and all this stuff, beginning of the primary. You know, all of this was done. The candidate they want at the beginning is the candidate they're going to have. Look at all the stuff they did, you know, to get here. Right. Yep. Yeah, the shadow app, the Bernie having mm -hmm. double digit exit poll wins. 
and Biden mis- mysteriously, you know, wins in, in South Carolina <laughs> or whatever. Yeah. And these precincts that had um, touch screen voting that mm-hmm. are we've known they've been hackable all the silicon valley companies you see repeatedly here i will point out like reed hoffman of linkedin being one of the major financers of that acronym which was tied up with shadow inc and all that stuff and then you have microsoft right now pushing for its election guard software to be the norm for every election after this one you know um among other things right i mean it's just um i mean and and you see them right in this thorn thing i mean almost everything i report on has some sort of nefarious silicon valley billionaire tie in it whether it's amazon whether it's microsoft or bill gates pierre omidyar um or any of those guys right reed hoffman i mean all of these guys and a lot of them had ties to epstein right reed hoffman especially okay so whitney um all this work you've done seeing all these connections i mean you've obviously been uncovering not just Epstein. I mean, going down the Epstein rabbit hole clearly reveals to anyone. Well, yeah, the Epstein rabbit hole is huge and connects to a bazillion different things, right? So it really depends on what side you want to look at it. Because remember, this wasn't just in the US, right? The whole Epstein thing was international. So, you know, you have some people, for example, that have been uh, hammering down on his ties to people in the UK in particular, right? and, and things like that, you know, I haven't got into that, <laughs> you know, I've been focusing on specific stuff, but I mean, you just see the, the connections pop up all over the place, right? Definitely um, disconcerting for sure. Um, but, you know, I think it's just a testament to why there, there, there is still no real investigation of the Epstein scandal. And there probably won't be unless there's some, you know, drastic change <laughs> in the government, which I'm uh, not counting on no. at least for now. The, the thing that it that all my investigation and then you, you know having you on the show and reading your work, it 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 it, it sort of it, as you get into the weeds, it sort of almost feels like it never ends. But when you step back, <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> it, it feels like that every day. <laughs> it's insane. Uh, yeah. But the thing that becomes clear is the sort of the tactics are the same. Like that's when the you playbook. can. Right. The same. You connect the dots pretty easily. Once you go down this road, you're like, oh, this is how they do it. They get in charge of this organization or this NGO, or they get these people in these positions of power in the mm-hmm. justice system or politically or whatever. And that's why this is always whisked away. You've got, you and I have talked about this before. They, 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 they want to always make the narrative like with the police department, like, oh, we got the bad apples, a couple of bad apples. We got them yeah. done. We got Jolene. We got Jeffrey. But, Case closed. And well, they said that with all the Reagan era scandals too. They were like, oh, well, you know, uh, there's just rotten fish in the barrel. So the barrel's still fine. You just have to throw out the fish. And it's like, no, just burn it all down. That's burn how I feel these days. <laughs> Uh, I mean, because it's, it's, it's nuts, really. Um, and we can get into my other article about election stuff earlier, but they are really setting, they're, they are setting us up. And I'm not, they here, I'm talking about both establishment parties and who they really work for, right? the oligarchs, the intelligence agencies, they are setting this election up to be a complete disaster and they are doing it on purpose, right? Yeah. They have been doing, now it's an overdrive and they're just like, it's there constantly in your face. Trump's not gonna leave office and all this stuff. I mean, they're really uh, hammering at home, but it's not just Trump's not gonna leave office. It's like, there's gonna be cyber attacks from foreign powers on election day and all this stuff too. So it's gonna be, it's gonna be quite an interesting day Uh, And they're telling you all in advance, they don't normally do this unless they, you know, they have some plans and it seems like they do.